I really can't stand Abrahamic religions. They teach us that we're terrible, that our animal instincts are bad, even though we're clearly animals, that our culture is all garbage, that there's nothing good about it, that we should be ashamed to be any part of it unless it's a part of our culture that strictly follows the dogma of the Bible. Just like 12-step programs, it teaches us to feel as bad about ourselves as possible and to use God as a way to feel better because we're following the rules of a vindictive, nasty control freak who only communicates through 2,000-year-old, poorly translated documents that will never know what the original slang meant, with the fear of eternal damnation as a reason to march in line, a reason to be a sheep of his pasture, a reason to feel like you're nothing without him, it, them, the trinity, or whatever new phrase they have. Our dog is an awesome dog. Oh, wait. But anyway, it teaches us to feel terrible about ourselves. I wouldn't say that it causes mental illness, but I would say that it accelerates depression in those who are prone to it. It increases self-doubt unless you're so holier than thou that all you can talk about is God and Jesus, 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 which is the goal to make people mindless Jesus, Jesus, Jesus drones. Nice and controllable. And then you have people like Joyce Meyer who push that we shouldn't try to figure things out, that we shouldn't be concerned with how anything works, that, again, like a 12-step program, that we should just give everything up to God. <laughs> it's like saying we should give it up to Dumbledore. Hey, everyone, let's give a big hand to Dumbledore. Hey, I'm starting to get that look, aren't I? Give it up to me, everyone. Me, me, me. Look at me. Jesus, 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 there's Jesus in your toast, there's Jesus in the window, there's Jesus juice, there's Jesus who shaves. Oh wait, there, there's white Jesus in the Middle East with a perfectly white robe and a perfectly trim beard with long hair, but wait, long hair on a guy is supposed to be bad according to the people who think everyone should dress godly. Godly. I suddenly think of Pat Robertson saying he hopes for a godly fumigation for everyone who isn't Christian. Yeah, I know, that's, it's not really related, but I heard the word godly. I hope more people name their kids God. It would offend the easily offended. Anyway, I can truly say that if children were allowed to feel okay about themselves without the need for an imaginary friend's approval, they'd probably have a much better genuine self-esteem for the rest of their lives. Yes, I understand that there are tons of great people out there who have done great things in their lives, who have a fantastic self-esteem, who have pushed boundaries left and right, who were raised under an Abrahamic religion. It doesn't mean that their religion didn't hinder them at many points. The point I've liked to make recently to counter when people say that I don't have the right to negatively judge the concept of sin, hell, and eternal damnation, and that people who were raised to think that way don't turn out that bad thing I like to say is that, well, hey, not all slaves lived terrible lives. There were some slave owners who treated their slaves like royalty. Does that mean slavery was okay? No, most certainly not. So to say teaching kids about eternal damnation is somehow, oh, it's okay because look, these people turned out okay. No, that's not a fucking argument. It is not an argument to keep teaching kids this crap. Then they tell me I'm being like Raoul or and Bionic Dance and Cult of Dusty. Well, on this subject, if I am, then I am. Tough shit. Teaching eternal damnation to young children is child abuse. It is wrong to take a perfectly happy child and turn that happiness into worry and guilt and fear and self-doubt and feelings of worthlessness in order to get an imaginary God's approval. Better get his approval. It's important to bow down to someone who would send you to burn for eternity for not thinking about the right things. You have free will, but it only counts if your will matches what this domineering control freak asshole desires. If you don't, you're supposed to be tortured for all eternity. Well, newsflash. A loving parent doesn't send their kid to be tortured to death for not taking out the garbage at an exact time, nor for disagreeing with them on something, nor for showing disapproval of a rule. A loving parent doesn't send their kid to be tortured to death really ever. A loving parent wouldn't put their children in the oven to die. But supposedly God is a loving and merciful supreme being. I don't know what universe that the God of the Bible is loving and merciful, but supposedly he is. Through Jesus, 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 pray to Jesus and you're forgiven. Get at your Jesus frosting dispenser kid. It's time to get creamy like yo yo G-Man in his pudden factory. Sick bad fly like all bomb and shit, you know, word homes like cool beans. Is an awesome dog. Have a nice day.